All right, folks, uh, let's go from the beginning to start with this, a little story. Um, I was uh, 18 and a half years old and uh, skinny, uh, six foot, one and a half inches, and 150 pounds. And I saw, one day I saw all these Hawaiians down here, and I go, oh, there's no way I'm gonna do that sport. And then about a week later, I saw my high school buddies going out to paddle here. And I go, well, shoot, if they can do it, I can do it. We're, we're all, you know, skinny guys. And by the way, that first house, that's where I lived in high school. Well, it was, that house, they rebuilt that one. But, but that's where I lived. So I saw these people, these big Samoans down here all the time. And uh, there's no way I was going to go out and do that. I was too skinny. But my friends were here, so they tried it. And then we saddled and we all paddled that season together. And they only, or, uh, any, or uh, Newport only had two, maybe three, six-man canoes with a hundred people. Okay. Uh, so what they did is that our workout was from here to the bell buoy and back. My high school kid. So I loved it so much. So I said, you know what? I'll just sit around and wait until seven or eight. You know, because I got nothing else to do. And one day. The steersman didn't show up for one of the crews. So, okay, I jumped in. Well, trial by fire, I learned how to steer. And that, 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 that but I never did get another chance to steer until uh, after I left uh, Newport. Uh, you know, it was an amicable thing. Uh, Noah Kalama gave me his blessing and he gave us the name Imua. You know, which means charge, go forward, or like a dolphin surfing. And he gave us that name. And in 1970, Sam or uh, uh, Lipu Downing and I built two canoes out of Bud Hole's dad's garage, six man, Malia's, and that was the start of a move. And uh, we, I think we started at uh, 10th Street. That was where we where we started our club. So that's. That's the beginning, okay. And again, I was I was very young. I didn't know anything. And for six years, uh, from '63 to '69, I paddled for, with Newport, and uh, I never made their first coup, even though uh, I was usually second or third on their time trial chart. But I but I was you know I it was not Hawaiian, you know. so I didn't make it. So Lipo and I said, well, let's let's start our own club, and so we started a move, and. Uh, going from there. Um, a little more of the history. Uh, the first year that I had, uh, we, I had, I picked up six uh, rollers, excuse me, five rollers from Orange Coast College that had just gotten back from the Henley in England. They were rollers from OCC. And I went into Blackies and I just said, hey, does anybody want to paddle outriggers? I got five guys that were good athletes. And that was the start of a MOA the real Lamoa. And uh, I didn't, you know, I paddled six years with, with Newport, but you know, the Hawaiian style, they really didn't teach you much. You just had to go and experience, and you know, go over there and, and learn. So I learned a lot from rowers. The first year we paddled, we never got over 36 strokes a minute with paddles that were this tall and wow. blades that were really pizza turners. Huge, <laughs> huge blades. I should have brought one down, I actually have one. Um, and I learned a lot over the years, and, but after the first year we actually got third place in Catalina out of all the clubs that were there. It was like seven and Outrigger came over, of course. And then the second year we won the Catalina race. And uh, we went on and dominated uh, through the 70s and through the 80s. Uh, I think we have 13 or 14 national championships uh, that we won. Uh, so uh, Mua had, was a very, very, very strong club with a lot of good athletes. And uh, uh, to this day, we are the only club on the planet that's ever beaten Tahiti in Tahiti. And we did it twice, in 81 and 82. So that, that's a that's resume that, that, that I don't know if it will ever be broken these days. In fact, unfortunately, that spurred Tahiti to start nationalizing. And, uh, after, after that, uh, they took the best clubs, and now Mai Tai Shell and all them, they're all, they're national teams. Good. 
So anyway, okay, that's that's the start of the world. And with uh, Lipu and I started the club. Uh, the, the road to becoming uh, a good steersman, there's two, there's one story with, with two ends. And I want to relay that because it'll, it shows a lot what you need to do if you're going to be a good steersman. The story revolves around Brent, my son, he was nine years old, and Kathy Dunn, my wife. And we, uh, she said, I want to learn how to steer. And Brent, who had just started paddling with a nine-year-old, uh, the Kikis, and so he, Brent got in the front of the boat, I got in the middle, and Kathy got in the back. And <clears throat> so we took off from the NEC, and we started doing circles. And Brent's up there in the front cracking up and laughing. He says, ah, ha, ha, you can't do that. You know, you know, can't you do any better than that? So she said, if you think you can do better, come back here. He went back there, we steered straight the rest of the time. Straight <laughs> as an arrow. So the, the lesson is that Brent was a natural. He picked it up and he flew. He won. Kiki races steering, they'd come into a turn, a boat and a half behind and come out ahead. That's just Brent. But Kathy, she worked her tail off to become an elite steersman. And she did, and she, she, was, she is great. If she still paddles, she would be great. So that's, that's a story of two different tales of how you get better. You work hard or you're a natural. And most of us aren't natural. So that's it. Um, you want to be a steersman. I kind of hope that you really don't because you're going to feel like Rodney Dangerfield because you'll never, you're always going to get it wrong. Even if you win a race, it's the power in front that did it. You're just back there smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's a steersman. You never get credit, but if you're offline and boats go on inside of you, boy, you can sure lose it for everybody. You know, so you got to have a thick skull if you're going to be a steersman. Now, if you're also, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm joking, of course, I, I want people to learn to be a steersman. But it is a responsible position. You are the coach. At that point in time, that boat is yours. So at, at the start, you make sure to have the spray cover, you have bailing buckets, you have an extra paddle, you have everything, you know, you tell people, okay, where this is where you're going to sit, where I want you to sit. That's your responsibility, okay? And then course management, that's your responsibility, that's a big one. Let's say that you're, we're in San Diego and we're, we're, we're headed out. Well, as you're headed out, look to the jetty. See which way the swell is coming. So when you come back, Maybe you can get a ride. Know what the tide is. So, you know, if it's going to be going out, then maybe you want to stay far left or far, far, far right so you're out of the tide. So, and the same with the wind. You, you, you have to, you look at those things before the start. Now, we all love Billy, right? And Billy says that we're going to make left-hand turns. Well, Billy is the only one that knows where Billy's going to go. And God love him. He does a really good job, but a lot of times, especially in the women's races, the, the, uh, the wind is changing. It usually starts changing around 9 to 10. So sometimes we're thinking we're going to make left-hand turns. Well, we make all right-hand turns. And that's just, that's, just, that's just the reality. So what you want to do is, if say you're going to make left-hand turns, just put yourself on the left side of the, the race course and then hope that he doesn't change it and you have to go all the way over. <laughs> but usually you can see that when you get up there. You can see, well, is he headed out this way or is he headed over this way now? And so you can make an assumption, okay, we're not going to go where we thought we were going to go. So if you're on the left side and you're coming up to a buoy, you're the inside boat. The other boats have to give way. So that's, you know, just being aware of that. And a lot of times, if I'm next to a boat and I'm just, a, you know, I, I don't even have, uh, uh, I don't have a full boat length. You need a full boat length, you know, otherwise, you know, you can, they'll, you'll run into each other. So I'll, I'll call ups, you know, four changes to try to get enough space. And usually a good steersman, they see it 
they don't, they'll, they're fine because then you both make the turn together. And then other opportunity times, when you're coming up to turn and you're side by side, you may be the outside boat, say, and, and it's an inside boat. Talk to the steersman over there and say, okay, let's take this together. That way you can put their armor that far away from their boat and you both turn it together. You don't lose anything. So, you know, communication in, in racing is really important, especially for other teams. Once you start communicating with that steersman, they're not just doing this anymore. They're going, oh, okay, you know, let's do this right. You know, they'll, they, they stop getting all amped up and they start thinking. And, uh, and then, you know, life is much better. So those, those are important tactics there. Now, also, wind and um, swell. A lot of these boats, all these boats have these funny little outrigger things called almas on the side, okay? So naturally, they want to always go left. They just, it, you can't help it. It is, it is what it is. You've got weight out there. The boat is naturally always wants to go to the left. So most really good steersmen spend a lot of time on the left. Now I got a rebuilt shoulder, with evident. So to be a really good steersman, in fact, I'll use the Kahakai race we had. That race that we're all right turns, wind coming at us, the boat always wanted to go left. First and second turn, always wanted to go left. I may have gotten off the left-hand side from paddling twice in two legs. And that's what you have to be able to do. You're just, just so you don't change the other side, just keep paddling on that side. I mean, dragon boaters, they figure that out. They know that you're gonna stay there, the body's gonna let you do it. The first 500 meters are gonna feel like crap, but then after that, the body says, okay, yeah, I'll let you do it for as long as you wanna do it. Well, that's the attitude you have to have when you're steering a six-man canoe. You're gonna spend a lot of time on the left because every time you poke, guess what? You slow the boat down. No matter how you do it, I mean, we'll talk about that, but one of the things when you poke, there's three different things. You know, first of all, you poke. If it's rough seas, do the work in front of you because it's like a rudder. Your, your, your paddle is a rudder. And the further forward it is up to a point, the quicker the boat turns, okay? That's when it's rough and you have to do it. Midway, back here, okay? I personally, in most conditions that I can, I do my work back here. Because, first of all, they don't feel it. And I'll leave the blade in maybe two strokes before I come back and take a third one. And then maybe if I have to, I'll sit it back there. There's nothing worse than the crew here at the go, ka-plunk, ka-plunk, and slapping the boat, the boat goes kind of like this. That, after a while, the crew's gonna get real tired of the boat slowing down and not keeping that run. So it's important to keep the run, the speed. So again, if, if it's relatively calm and not too and flat, I always do my work back here. And the blade just a little slightly under the boat, but, but back here. Now, that's poking. Pulling in, that's the hard thing. Everybody can pull, you know, you can get the boat around. But can you but can you do the same thing on the same side? That's where pulling in comes in. When you're on the left, you know, depending, you know, sometimes a lot of times when I'm pulling in, if it's relatively calm, I will, instead of being right here, I'm here and I'm taking maybe 10 strokes just outside just to keep the boat that wants to go left, just to keep it straight. But if it starts to get bad, then I'll go a further out and pull in. And the good thing about that is, even if you're out here like this and you're pulling in, it's a J. So when I get back, I'm pulling into here, now I can finish with everybody else. And I'm still pulling. I'm still contributing to the speed of the boat from there to there. I do up here, it's the same. I'm not doing losing anything. But out here, it's more of a J stroke. And sometimes it's when it's really rough, I'll hang out there for you know five or six strokes. And if it gets, if I'm not, if it's not bringing the boat around, then you got to come over. It's just the reality of it. But give yourself a little bit of time to do it. Now, when you're on the right, poking is much more difficult because now you don't have your body to work with. You got just your arms. 
you can't go outside of the boat. You go outside of the boat, you're going to tip it over. Big time. It does, all it takes is one big stroke like this outside, it's going over. That's a six man. Doesn't, doesn't matter. They're, they're very, very delicate to that. It's the pride. They're balanced so well. Same with poking. When you poke hard on the right, you lift the arm. If you watch it in flat water, you can actually, just poking it like that, the ama lifts, it off-weights it. So you have to be very careful and cut. When I poke, I'm usually leaning left. I'm pulling pulling and leaning left. That's not easy to do, and you're just using all arms. It's all arms. So you've got to be strong to be able to, to, to do it like that. Now, one of the things I've learned to do when it's relatively calm, when I'm paddling, I can paddle just like everybody else. And when they call a change, the last stroke before I make that change, let's say that, the, you know, I'll pull in. So now I've started, started the boat going to the left. I'm pulling in, the bow is going to the left. So now I can come over on the left and just have it, instead of straight, I'm paddling like this for eight, 10 strokes, just pulling in slightly and I'm keeping the boat straight. Now when it changes again, I pull in and it starts the bow to go to the right. And I go do the same thing. So you just, basically you're just another paddler. And that's a technique you can use when it's relatively you know, calm. You can, you can do that. You can maneuver the boat and make it do what you want and still be a paddler. Because boats go a lot faster with six than five. <laughs> that's just a given. So work with that. Uh, the pickup speed increase. Oh, there is a talk about one of the things is that I give myself 15 degrees either side that's straight because you're never going to keep them perfectly straight. And there, I've noted, I found something in, in one man's, and I know it's applicable in six man's as well. And that's the fact that if you're if you're one if you're in your one man and all of a sudden the boat kind of goes off to the side, you, I look at my NK monitor, I'm going faster. Not, a, not big time, just maybe 15 degrees off. And there's a, if you know, I was a NACO architect, he could tell you that the difference in the water, it's kind of like the air pressure on, a, on an airplane, that, on the, air, uh, the flaps, that the difference in pressure, water pressure from side to side, you will slip and you will go faster. So the same thing applies to a six man too. So not to worry if the boat just kind of, all of a sudden is kind of going this way. If you, if you won't have time to look at your monitor because you blink of an eye on a six man, that's it, it's gone. You don't have the time. Then in a one man, you're pedal steering so you can look at it. But it actually, the boat will actually pick up speed. So generally, it's not, you're not gonna get hurt if you go a little bit off course. Uh, for a short period of time before you bring it back. So not to worry about it. Give yourself 15 degrees either side and call that straight. Okay? And, and uh, you know, one of the, one of the last things is the, the Kahakai race, the steersman has to be the, the, the thinker in the boat. And the last race I raced with Kai, we were we were head to head with Kahakai's senior master crew and they were actually a little ahead of us. And I didn't think we were going to be able to catch him. So what I did is then on the downswell, which there was no downswell, it was just pretty flat, I started calling out, bumps. Okay, a bump. No, there wasn't one, but I got everybody to paddle a little harder for five or six strokes, and we ended up passing them and beating them. But it was only because I go, what am I going to do here? You know, we're not passing them. And then also, one of the things you, that I've noticed when I'm racing is sometimes when you're right next to another canoe, they freak out and they're gone, out the door. Well, in that Kaakai race, I got pretty close to them and all of a sudden they got amped up and they took off and got a boat on it. So I go, okay, that's not working. So I went out 50 yards off to the right and they forgot about it. And then we passed them. <laughs> so there's a lot of little strategy if you're gonna be a good steersman. You gotta think your way through the course. And then, if, you know, if you're, if you're lucky enough and, and good enough, uh, you're going to be successful. Uh, one last thing, just, I had a lot of Olympic athletes, I had a lot of great paddlers that paddled for me over the years. I mean, you name it, 
they probably paddled with me one time or another Catalina Molokai. And one of the things that if you're going to be a great steersman, you got to be a great paddler. And our, um, our time trials, I was never worse than fifth or sixth out of 12 or 15 guys. It's like, it's like a paddler. So they have faith in you as an athlete. They, you're in there, you're paddling just as fast and just as strong as they are. So if you're going to be a good steersman, you got to be a good paddler too. You know, what I want to do is to, okay, for help with you. I want you to be able to maneuver the boat. And you notice, you want the water to go under the boat. You don't want to hit the boat, that's stopping it. The water's deep, you go under. The water's going under and coming out the other side. So, a lot of times, like I say, I'm, I'm paddling like this, keeping it straight. I'm almost straight. You know, other times, I'm paddling like this. And again, you can see I'm using my whole body, because I can't. So on this side, uh -uh. this is it. <laughs> you don't get outside the boat. You do, your, your team is not going to be happy, unless, especially if they can't swim. So, again, doing the poking, again, I'll sit it back here. I'll finish the stroke. I'll sit it, maybe two strokes, then I'm back in. Another thing about this, the, the stroke, the, the technique that we have now, uh, with the Tahitian stroke, which is a very long stroke all the way through. It's really good for a steersman in some ways because because it's so long You can make a correction back here and still get up there You can get back up and make the next stroke Now if we we're carrying 65 strokes and the stroke was short, you wouldn't be able to But because the stroke is long, everybody's doing their work, you can get back up And, and get the next stroke. So I, I absolutely love this Tahitian or Johnny Pukea stroke, whatever you want to call it. It, it really, uh, it's great for a steersman, and uh, that's it. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll get back to seven, and you can put some people in it. We can do both boats. Um, can I get my, my little seat? My little yeah, spare seat? I had a, I had a quick yeah. question. Yes. Uh, like uh, last night, uh, outside, the there was a, a short fetch between the swells. In fact, you could almost get like three waves on one boat. And if, if it was bigger, like, if you, if you go, do you want to go straight down swell? Or, I mean, let's say the target is straight down. Like, the boat can just pearl into those things. Well, then you then you have to you have to learn to go off swell. That's what like I you would in a one-man. If, otherwise, you'd pearl. Yeah, you go right you do the same thing in a six-man. You don't have to be exactly into it. This is my favorite story. Of course, it's my son, so yeah. But there was a race called the Olamau race, a three-day race they had about uh, five or six years ago. And they had teams from Tahiti, yes, everybody, Australia, Hawaii. And uh, uh, Al or Danny Ching put together a team. They had, they had their six, and then there was a six from the NAC. My son was steering it. The first day, uh, uh, Danny's team got, I think, third or fourth overall. I think they were third overall, maybe fourth. About a minute behind, or two minutes behind. The second day, my son steered, and it was that, that, that place from Maui to Molokai. It it's, can be big, and it was big. And Danny and them were on the escort boat, and they started out, and my son lost it two or three times. The boat got away from it, okay? He hadn't figured out what to do at the swell because it was a little bit off of them. And, and you, you try to catch it and all of a sudden the boat pearls, not pearl completely, but it, it goes off course. And finally, after about three times, Brent figured it out, the, the line he had to take to get to that, which is what like what you were talking, Dave. And it was probably a little bit off of straight and he did it and that was that was one of my favorite stories and they went on and won that day and and it was it's all about being a tactician being able to figure out okay what went wrong how come i what the boat did this and then changing your thought pattern figuring it out and then getting the boat to run that way you know it, we can all do it but we have to think about it that's it. That was the story I, I had to relay. Uh,
You're just on that side, the body doesn't care, you know. Your legs don't care when you're running, you know. It just, you just got to keep, you, you got to learn to be really good on the left and you can just stay there forever. And then you're fine. And then when you have to, because paddling on the right is fine, but when you have to pull in, then you, there's always going to be an issue. You, you, you're lighting the boat. And when you poke on the right, too, the same way. Is if you poke from the center like that hard on the right, you watch the arm will lift. It just does. So you have to be careful. And, and if you're going to poke on the left, Brent on the, on the Catalina, let me have that for a second. Was, he was steering like this because the, the swell, everything was coming. He was like this. He lost his paddle twice because of it. You know, it, you had his staying inside. The, he was outside of the boat like this to keep the boat from tipping over, and that's what can happen. You, know, you got to if you're on the right. Most people can do things on the left, but on the right is where you have to really be careful. Okay, anybody else? What's that thing that you do in the back? So you send me. Oh, I I call it. It's a J stroke. I pull in and then I finish out. Boom, this way. That way I'm paddling. I, I'm doing the work here and not really contributing much to the speed, but I but to finish here, I'm still pulling. I'm pulling with them and I'm out. I'm pulling and I'm out. It's a J. When when would you use the J stroke in Always. the direction? Does it, does I use it on every on it, when, I, when I have to make radical, like a, I call this radical. This is not. This pretty much stays straight. But when I'm when I'm have to pull in hard, I J it's a J stroke. That way I can I'm because the first part of the J, you're you're getting the boat to go where you want it to go. The second part, I'm actually contributing to the speed of the boat. Okay, it's, it, it is called the J stroke. There we go. All right. And there's uh, another question. Um, so if you're on the left, do you have your your left knee more forward than your right, or you just keep it? You set? know what? Um, I get when I get tired. Yeah, I just it, switch both ways. I don't care. A lot of times, my, my leg, my left leg, I'm on the left a lot. I'll switch it and have the right leg. Okay. And the left leg back for a while. But you don't have doesn't doesn't matter. You don't have to get here. That's a good question. That I think that's a good question. One of the things you want to do when you're when I like you would in a one man. When you're on the right side of the boat of your one man, you want to keep yourself pretty well centered. I kind of put a little pressure on my left knee, and that helps keep the arm uh, down, so it I don't tip over. Especially if it's I'm getting a little side shot. I keep little pressure with my left knee. The six man, I do exactly the same thing. When I'm, if I'm on the right, pulling on the right side, I keep my left knee hard against the gun because that's offsetting the pressure. Same if I'm poking. I'm, I'm not only leaning a little left, I'm pressure, using big pressure with my knee. So I, and if you, if you become a steersman, you'll want to get long pants <laughs> because you'll wear out your knees. Yeah. I have a nice set of long pants just for that very reason. Otherwise, you come back with all these bruises and work there. Okay, go ahead. All right. Is this 2J? Okay, that's it. When you get to that point, you finish it back okay. like you were just a paddle. Boom, there, that's it. There you go. See, now you've contributed to the speed of the boat. But now try the, try the right side. Alright, so... Just four of a straight? No, that'll get... You, you, pull the boat over there. Make it go over there. <laughs> there you go. And you're, you're keeping your weight inside. It's hard because you're using yeah. your arms. But you have to. You know, put your, put like your leg against... Put your left leg yeah. against that so you help counteract the pressure. There you go. You can pull in like that, but you can't. See, your head just got out of the yeah. boat. You do that, you're going for a swim. You know, it, it, it's a fine line. And a lot of times, you, your crew, they just got to expect you're going to do it until you figure it out. All right. It's because like, it happens. <laughs> like your left eye's got to be in the boat. Like right over there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the, the newest, youngest steersman that we have. 
with the NAC, and he's one of the best. Yeah, he's great. And he's a young kid, great attitude, and he's really good. He's going to take my son's spot. I call him a buck thirty, but he weighs 135. <laughs> Swinging it from swinging, I think, aren't you? Yeah. Let's go. Let's see if the boat moves. Go ahead. I think the weight, I brought the weight down. You don't want to, normally, you don't want to get that much weight outside the boat. Okay. You, you, you know, just a little bit, you know, like your, maybe your shoulder. But not, there you go. I don't try to learn just to bring it in and pull the boat around. I want to see the boat. Let me have the balance. Maybe, maybe it's, there's something wrong here. But see how easy I pull the boat around? I just pull it around. That's what you should do. Like that, that, that's fine. This in front of you, if it's if, if it's rough, if it's just regular poking right there is fine. And then I like to trail it back. When I'm still. There, you see now that? You see? Easily he was pulling the boat around. You were struggling, and it, it, it shouldn't be that hard. You steered before? Me? No. Well, he's, this is guy's is a natural. You're, you're moving the boat, and it's not hard for you. Actually, you're, 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 you're quite it wobbles like that. This? You, you, um, let me see that. I'm, Sure, what causes that wobble? I don't. For the most part, it doesn't wobble much, and I can, I can get it. This with this in this station stroke that we're using, it, the front of the stroke is is absolutely key to to the success. So you want to set the blade first. You want to get it. Once you've got it in the water, you know, then it's easy to to, to maneuver the boat to get it to okay. from side to side. And it won't walk. You're going. Yeah, right. And that maybe that's your top hand. Yeah. It's not. Mm -hmm. Try it again. But you're keeping your weight inside. That's good. And you're moving. then you can probably also move it by putting just from out there. Now, I need a J finish. As you come back, your work is, is right there at the front that you pull the boat around, and then you finish out with the J. That way you're contributing. You gotta hold, I see what you're doing here. You gotta hold the, don't hold, yeah. Hold it, there. You don't, you don't hold the blade. You gotta have a good grip on it. There you go, that's good. Yeah, anybody can poke. That's 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 the easy part. But you try to always be gentle. Okay, that's good. Be gentle with the boat. You know, the crew doesn't like it when the 
boats don't like this. They don't, they don't like that. So you want to always try to be as gentle as you can with the boat. They, you don't want the crew to feel you back there. They're the happiest, when, the crews are happiest when the boat's running and, and they don't notice you back no, there. No, everyone's not that. Yeah, they just, they just want to go straight and go fast. Yeah. If you poke hard, you're slowing the boat down. <laughs> My stroker, this guy's name is Dick Gebhard, he was, he made me a better steersman because if I missed a stroke, he crane necked it and he could look all the way around and look at me while he was paddling. <laughs> And I said, oh shit, he's gonna kick my ass. So I learned to be gentle with the boat. So he wouldn't go, what are you doing back there? You notice that the top hand's not doing much. It's not doing this. It's staying. I know we're in shallow water, but it's, the idea is it's setting the blade, and then you can do the work. That's good, girl. All right. What, what, is, what is poking? What is poking? Poaching is everything we talked about. No poking. 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 Oh, that's this is poking. Okay. Poking is easy. You just set the blade in at an angle, and then w wait a couple strokes. Again, okay. if, stroke, if I'm in rough stroke, seas, I poke in the front. That's a stroke. That's a stroke. No, that's no. a stroke. Yeah. yeah. And if I'm, if it's, if it's relatively calm, I try to do all my work back here. I let the blades trail back. That way they don't feel me. And they have a tendency to feel you, especially in the unlimited. They're so hollow that you can, when you're when you're poking here to there, the, the front or that, just right the other side. What'll happen is they'll hear it bang, bang, and that's really disconcerting sound. So I try to make my pokes back here and I just let it hit the boat easily. Tap the boat, maybe I'll miss a couple strokes and then I'll get back into it. Then they haven't noticed. Oh, look how fast you're going to go. See? And you're keeping your weight in. There you go. Oh, good. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to let Okay, you got it. That's easy. Let's try the other side. Don't lean out. There you go. Just turning your head doesn't doesn't work. Don't let that shoulder get out of the boat much. There you go. Keep the leg, that leg tight against the hull. Now we're not talking steering, we're talking paddling. See that cavitation you're starting? You're starting your stroke like that. I start the stroke like this. I set it first, and then you're, you're hitting the water. You want to set it first and then do it. Except that you don't have to have be like this 
and steering uh, when you're outside the boat. You can you can have your top arm inside just a little more control. I, I don't let it get, I don't go out like this. I keep it more in control like this. Closer. And, and yes, it's closer to you. You don't have to be way out there. That's an awkward move. And the more, the further out you are like that, the longer it takes you to get back up. You're wasting time. Time is speed. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or are you going straight down? I said it first. I'm going it, bang. I it, said. Is it, are you cutting set. It? Are you cutting it I don't slide it in. I said. I mean, there are people that do that, that kind of slide it in or slide it in. I don't. We used to do that. Now I just set. The, I, I'm just another paddler. So I set the blade. I do the work. I set the blade. I do the work. Set it. To get it. Get the blade in first. Then the stroke can be nice and long, a lot of power. <laughs> okay. Go oh, look at this. Look at this. Go, oh, you're doing fine. But keep your weight inside on the right side. There you go. Okay. Now you set the blade first, like you're when you normally would. There you go. You now go to the other side again. Make it move that way, but at the angle of this way. So it's, yeah, so you're not so far out. I think you can still move it. Here, you're doing it. Okay. And when you finish, finish back at the jig. When you just come to the hole and go like that, when you get there, finish back with the curve. Oh, okay. With the curve. There, that's it. That's it, you finish it. That's it. And keep that pressure on all the way to the end. Even if you lose, you have a tendency of sometimes steering, you're going to lose, you could lose the angle a little earlier than the crew. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter if you're still, even if you're losing the angle, if you put pressure, you're contributing to the crew. There, that's it. Excellent. Good. You, she's the best so far of everybody. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. See how easy it is? Yeah, yeah buddy. This moves at a different yeah. It's not doing anything that's that hard. A little bit out of the boat, but not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can be more out on the left. Yeah. <laughs> when you do it, put that leg, use that leg of pressure yeah, yeah. against the right. Okay. And then pressure on the left when you're outside. There you go. That's cool. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, no, that's yeah. You know, you know, you've got good technique, and you know, you know how to make a boat move. Yeah, and I hope. Steering is the boat is the same. It's, it's confidence really in the back of the boat. Yeah. yeah. Take a breath seat now. Not too much pressure. Now look at that. See that? He knows how to move the boat. Finish back. Do the change. with everybody else. Just like that. It's so simple. And when I, on the right side, I don't get out too far. You know, I'm not out here. I'm right here. I can still do the same J-stroke. A slight, they're just a little deeper, different J, but it's the same thing. Okay? Uh, are we... Are we done or what? Everybody get a chance? <laughs> yeah, I'll try. <laughs> 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 
Set the blade first. You're, okay. you're starting to pull before you're before you're in the water. Okay, go over now the other side. <laughs> Better to go, and then just come back around. Try not to get too much in the way outside the boat. Because it's not the best to run. Okay. And if you're gonna do it, then just remember you got if you're on the left side, kind of keep your leg pressed against the gunnel on the right. When you're on the, on the right side, paddling. Pressure your leg against the gunnel there. You're the, good. I can make this example right. If you have a, a team, and every 15 strokes you make a change, but you lose a quarter, let's say a quarter of a second, which isn't very much because you didn't make good changes. You go for, let's say, a quarter change. You go for 10 minutes. That's a minute. In an hour. It's 10 minutes. Little things make a big difference. Make a huge difference. You know, if you're an eighth of a second slower coming over with your crew, makes a big difference. If your steersman's poking more, more than another steersman, and you're looking, you're looking at them, and they're they're poking and you're paddling, you're making big inroads to go past them. So little things make a big difference. If you're going to be a, an elite steersman or a good steersman, you just have to be on it and think about what you want to do all the time. And it's mentally, it's more mentally fatiguing for me anyway than it is tiring. I can paddle four or five hours at 75%, not a problem. But I get mentally fatigued. And a lot of times in the Catalina races, I will have uh, one of my steersmen, usually one of the elite steersmen, jump up to six, come back and stick. I'll go to five for two changes, just so I can, I can go like this and paddle, and I'm just having fun and loving it, and then jump back. I don't need to get out. I just got to take a mental break, because all it takes is one second, and you're gone. The boat's, oh shit, I'm over there. <laughs> and I should be over there. So, you know, steering is a really huge mental thing, especially if you want to be good, and you're always thinking about what's up ahead of you, where I want to be on the next turn? What do I, where do I want to be downwind, on the downwind side? Do I want to be further over here with the swell? I see the swell coming. Maybe I should make it closer to the buoy turn, or should I go around and go further out just so I can get a better angle to, to run it? you got to be on it all the time. That's being a steersman. you just not back there mechanically steering the boat. You have to think your way through the course. Is that it? I have a question. Um, which is more drag on the boat? Um, a, a, a post that you have to hold out for six or seven strokes or a poke on the right? For you know, no, I, could, I poke on the right. That's After more about four boat. strokes, if, if I'm not, if I'm, that's another thing we didn't do, but you're holding, you can't do it sitting here. I hold pressure. And if I go for about four strokes and it ain't, ain't working, then I'll come over and poke. It just, it's, you, you, you got, you're wasting time and you're not, you're not helping the boat. It's so tiring to pull. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and it's hard on you because you're really leaning out there and it's a lot of pressure. So it's easier just to come over and, and poke once or twice and then get back into the time. And try to be try to be fairly gentle because perception is everything. If the crew feels that all the time, they're going to get really frustrated. So try to be gentle with, especially when you're back here, they shouldn't hear you at all. Because I, when I finish back here, it just taps the boat real easily. They don't hear me. And I can miss a couple strokes, and they're not going to know it. But when I go like they ain't going to feel that. And they don't want that. You know. Again, you're not, steersmen are not important. It's everybody else that wins the races. You're just back there, you know, drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. <laughs> you're being so humble, Dennis. What's that? I said, you're being so humble right now. <laughs> 
Can you show us that? Yeah. Either that or he has some addiction issues. <laughs> Dennis, there's one poke, one poke you said for like big water, which, which is up in Big front. water, always in front. When I'm doing Molokai, I'm in front. Okay. I almost have to because the boat's going like this all the time. Yeah. And you've got to control it. Uh, medium, you know, well, I will say I'm... You know, and you do I, it on the right, I, too. I, I'm in front. And, it's, and again, it's, it's the, the thing, if, if you have a rudder, it's a rudder. If the further forward the rudder is to a point, the quicker the boat reacts. So the further back, the least it reacts, yep. and, and the more you can go for speed. What about taking a... Getting on a wave, getting on a... On the wave? Uh, pulse, well, what do you do? a good lesson on getting on waves. We lay, we lie on your crew. I've learned that lesson the hard way. You, want, you try to take that extra stroke to help your crew get on the wave and the boat goes sideways. So make sure you're where you want to be and miss that last stroke and let them do the work getting on the, on the wave. I learned that the hard way because I'd be going, I, I didn't always have great crews. I had a lot of good crews and sometimes we just weren't getting it. So I was out there cranking hard to get on that wave and uh, the boat would go off. Just all it takes is one stroke. I, and, and I was trying to take it and then the boat, it's gone. So I had to learn to say, okay, if they are bump, and I'd do as many as I could, and then I'd, I'd come over and I'd have to go. You know. That's it.